This is a huge week for stocks. Probably the biggest of the year since we've had a little bit of a correction and we've got literally everything you could possibly imagine on the calendar. We've got Meta, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Mama. That's a big chunk of earnings. We've also got Jerome Powell. We've got other central banks too around the world. So three key charts that I'm watching. Risk radar is where it is. Not doing anything differently. I feel like everything's been in a good spot. Bitcoin gets to a higher high, they don't have to change the crypto light to green. That's the only thing I'm really monitoring. Or most importantly, if the S&P 500 gets through 55 or what did KG tell us, 55, 10, something around there would probably bring the yellow light. That's the first step. Stocks need to get the S&P back through that gap to the upside. Look at the short term chart over the last five days. Tells you a pretty clear story and it's got actually a pretty clear pattern in it as well. Here's what's good. We have been making higher highs, higher lows rather. What's bad is that we haven't been making the higher highs. We got the higher lows, we haven't been making the higher highs. We're stuck right below 55, so resistance still. Not a coincidence, the gap down from the real selling last week still exists above us, kind of somewhere beyond that 55. First step is if we can get through this kind of ascending triangle that we've built into the near-term chart, then that would be really good, obviously. You kind of think this is generally more bullish. The ascending triangle kind of is. Odds are it goes this way. But if it doesn't, then you could get a really sharp move back down basically to where it started, which is below 54. So that's kind of your uh, real clear line in the sand. If we don't get a move quick, then the odds of this turning around go up. That's the way I think about the chart. So. Ascending triangle in the short term with a resistance at 55. That's what we got to think about for the S&P 500. Now, under the hood, Apple's going to be the most important. I think just hands down, not even close, absolutely the most important earnings this week. Everything else, always fun. But Apple just is still the center of so much and its connection to the consumer coming into this earnings at a multiple forward PE above 32. It's the most expensive it's ever been, other than like, you know, when Apple didn't actually make money. This is the most expensive that you've ever seen Apple most likely. And the fact today the stock didn't even move on a report that they are gonna be pulling their AI, uh, pushing it back a little bit, like, that's not good. But for some reason the stock didn't mind. So I guess that's a bullish thing. But if this number does not satisfy, and I feel like the odds that it satisfies are just low. When Apple trades at 33 times forward and they're putting slight delays on initiatives for the main project, and we haven't even seen the product yet, I've got the Google phone AI update. It's cool. It's not worth refreshing over. And I don't know how much Apple's going to be able to do on top of that. So a lot of reasons to doubt it. But what's so important is that, of course, the ecosystem around Apple has rallied as well. Moving time on Simi, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Corvo. I mean, Apple just holds the key to so much still, especially when the economic data are telling us that the consumer's running a little bit light on the pocketbooks with discretionary income continuing to dwindle. So Apple's the most important specific stock for me, but don't forget about the macro. Also, 10 year to two year spread. The yield curve here is gonna be important. We've seen widening out but we've also gotten a little bit of flattening here. We've actually gotten two of the worst versions of the yield curve. I put this back to the last month so you can capture the whole kind of rotation regime. That's where we started getting the steepening right there, but that was a bull steepener, which is when the Fed has to cut because they need to, to help out the economy. And then we kind of stabilized a little bit. We had a few days in there where there was a beer steepener, but then we've gotten a bull flattener because the two-year yield hasn't changed in the last week. Why would it? Market's already set Powell up for 100% odds of multiple cuts this year. So you can't really get more dovish than that. So the two-year, how does that go down further unless Powell goes super dovish? The bull flattener with the 10-year yield dropping because stocks got hit. It's just not a good picture. It's not a good look right now. We really need to have something come and turn the short-term narrative around and get that S&P back through 55 to give bulls a chance. Otherwise, this could be a really dicey week, but either way, it's going to be a big one.